How's it going, Fins fans? It's your boy Dylan, and I'm back with another episode of Dolphins with Dylan. Uh, before I start out, though, uh, I want to say a couple things. First of all, I apologize for being gone for the past few days, past several days. I had some uh, technical difficulties. My old camera uh, was having some issues. I got a new camera. It's better. Uh, so the production quality is going up here. Uh, you know, things are things are looking up, having an upward trend. So we'll continue that. I am also definitely working on some other things. I'm going to work on... Uh, you know getting uh, my lighting a little bit better I've also got myself a video editor program so I'm gonna start tweaking my videos a little bit adding some things in there and, and sprucing it up making it a little bit more professional and uh, hopefully it'll, it'll turn out nice and you guys like it I um, want to say a couple other things real quick I want to give a couple shout outs to some people uh, let's see um, I'd like to start with uh, there's a couple podcasts I want to talk about. Um, give some shout outs to. There's Dougley Do Wrong. He's a Miami Dolphins podcaster on YouTube. Check him out. He's really good. Um, let's see. Skaggs. Uh, damn, man. I, I want to say 1993. Skaggs1993. I can't remember his. It's uh, <laughs> terrible at me. I can't remember his full. The numbers in his. Uh, and his YouTube, but look up Skaggs, S-K-A-G-G-S, uh, and you should be able to find, he's another Dolphins YouTuber. Um, also, <clears throat> the Sims and Lefko podcast, it's a Bleacher Report podcast, it's really great, it's a football in general podcast, but you should definitely check it out, there's a lot of good stuff there. Uh, and then also, Good Morning Football, it's a show on TV, um, but you know, they, they show a lot of love to the Dolphins, they've had some good segments on there. Uh, and they you know they're, they're pretty realistic and they <clears throat> they can see the you know the things going on down in South Florida and all the you know intangible things that are happening and you know with the team that that should help elevate us to the next level and finally before I get into the articles and the news and everything I want to say uh, you know <clears throat> my condolences and you know my thoughts go out to uh, the Sperano family and friends, uh, as we know, Tony Sperano passed away um, at the age of 56 a few days ago. Um, so thoughts and condolences out to him and his family, or to his family, rather. Uh, uh, sorry. <laughs> All right, so getting into it, <clears throat> uh, this first article I want to talk about is from the Finsider. It says, Ryan Tannehill reintroduces himself, thanks teammates for working out with him. The Miami Dolphins return to football tomorrow, today, actually, this was written yesterday, with the veterans reporting for training camp, which the veterans report today. Yeah. I know, it's nice. It's awesome. Tomorrow they start practice. Day one of practice is tomorrow. Tomorrow. Okay. Anyway, the first practice will come Thursday with the team hoping to pick up where they left off during the off-season training program. Yeah, and I know I'm totally behind on all these articles and stuff like that, sorry. But I'm going to stay back, I'm going to get back up on it now that uh, I'm up and running again. That was not the only time the players were working out, however. Quarterback Ryan Tannehill, who was returning after missing all of 2017 with a knee injury, released an Instagram video on Tuesday thanking teammates who worked with him in the off-season. The video includes Jay-Z's public service announcement with the rapper's first line of the song, Allow Me to Reintroduce Myself, and that's exactly what Tannehill is looking to do this year. And there has to be a little side eye to this video. Earlier this offseason, former Dolphins and current Cleveland Browns wide receiver Jarvis Landry seemed to imply that Tannehill did not want to work out in past offseasons, which he does every year. Every year. <clears throat> Tannehill releasing this video sure does seem like the quarterback is just throwing out there how much he worked with his current teammates, grinding with them all offseason. Yeah, so I mean, that's that's something that Tannehill's been doing for his entire career, you know, continues to do, and I don't see stopping anytime soon. <clears throat> uh, I mean, he's just always been that way. He's always trying to get better. Every day, all day, that's what he wants, dude. Nobody gives Tannehill credit for... A lot, a lot, really. But, I mean, that man bleeds, sweats, and cries Aqua and Orange. And he just, he does everything absolutely right. Anyway, moving on. Uh, 
This next one is an article by Dolphins Wire. Is Dolphins defensive end Charles Harris prime for a big year in 2018? I think so, absolutely. I think he's going to bust out and he's going to be nasty. He's going to be the next Wake for sure. He's going. To, he's Wake's heir apparent. And I think him and Robert Quinn, because Robert Quinn's only 28, I believe. You know, I think him and Robert Quinn can do some things for the next few years. And then obviously we do need to start getting a little bit younger. But, you know, we'll see what happens with Andre Branch and whatever. Hopefully he gets healthy <clears throat> and can do some stuff as well. Dolphins defensive end Charles Harris finished his rookie season with just 19 tackles, two sacks, and two passes defensed. Those numbers are not exactly impressive considering he was the 22nd overall pick in 2017. Although his first season didn't go the way he would have liked, Harris still showed potential to be an all-pro passer. <clears throat> Pass rusher, excuse me. Instead of looking at just his number, it is numbers, it is better to look deeper at Harris's plays. Now I'm not going to be able to... Uh, well, you're not going to be able to see these unfortunately um, even with a video editor I'm not too sure how I would get these in here I'd have to see if I can f I would have to see if I could find them online but anyway they're just little gifs basically of some of the plays that he was involved in and then there's an explanation so I'm gonna give you those in this play below which you can't see Harris crashes in from his wide nine position notice he is spread out wide and crashes inside then Devon Godshaw turns his back to the running lane Harris forces the back to his help, where Lawrence Timmons, Kigo Alonso, and Xavier Howard are able to clean up the play. Watch as Harris gets his hands into the left tackle and rips to break the tackle's grip. This is the next one. He was half a step late. Regardless, this is a good job to pressure Raiders quarterback Derek Carr in the backfield. Next, his first career sack was an all-around good play. Harris is lined up in the wide nine as the right defensive end here. He gets upfield and bends under the block to get the sack. Harris demonstrates his speed and balance to get to the quarterback. Next, Harris shows his explosive ability by getting up and batting down the ball. This play may not seem like a big deal, but he explodes towards the quarterback as he stops his momentum. Then Harris is able to get up uh, to tip the pass. Harris didn't have huge numbers as a rookie, but he showed flashes of being a good edge defender. Toward the end of last season, he began showing his excellent potential. Harris combines speed and power very well, allowing him to get by blockers in a multitude of ways. All draft picks should be given three years to show before they are truly judged, but Harris could prove to be well worth his first round selection if he continues to improve. Plus two, obviously think, you know, he had to, uh, you know, improve on setting the edge and you know being a good uh, defensive end in the run game as well so I mean yeah obviously there's development in that as well he had to focus on that as well and obviously also the team as a whole didn't do very good period so I mean there were struggles all around uh, all right, next article comes from Pro Football Talk, and it's Sperano's embrace of the Wildcat became his signature coaching move. The 07 Patriots went 16-0. The 07 Dolphins went 1-15. The 08 Dolphins, led by first-year head coach Tony Sperano, seemed to be destined to finish far closer to 1-15 than 16-0, even after quarterback Chad Pennington landed in their laps after Brett Favre forced a trade out of Green Bay. He became persuaded to accept a deal with the Jets, and the Jets unceremoniously dumped Pennington. Of course, that's not how it played out. The Dolphins finished 11-5, winning the AFC East. Since 2003, it's the only time the Patriots haven't won the division. Yes, the Patriots lost quarterback Tom Brady in Week 1 to a torn ACL, which, by the way, I want to say that obviously Tannehill and Brady are not the same player, but Tannehill is a lot closer to Brady, meaning just elite status, you know, top tier echelon quarterback than people give him credit for. And people want to talk about uh, the fact that he's coming off the ACL surgery. He's had surgery, it's a repaired knee, and he's more than capable of doing it. There are instances like Tom Brady of quarterbacks coming off torn ACLs and being just fine. He's got the mentality and mindset for it. He's good to go. Plus, he was super durable before that, and that's not going to change all of a sudden. But the Patriots were still 11-5, and five, and they could have been 12-4, and four, but for a fateful early season Sunday in Foxborough. That's the day Sperano, in a fit of desperation, unleashed the Wildcat on Bill Belichick and company. That was such a great example of what a human game football is, Pennington told Peter King of NBC's Football Morning in America. You had a bunch of guys on that team everyone gave up on, feeling rejected. Maybe the head coach had a little of that in him too. Then we went out and played, and it was a perfect storm of synergy, imagination, and work ethic. 
The Dolphins had started out 0-2 and, and they were start staring loss number three in the face with a trip to New England on the docket. We couldn't make six inches in the running game, Pennington told King. Tony got up in front of the staff and said, hey, bring me your ideas, whatever you got. Quarterbacks coach David Lee suggested the Wildcat, a not new football wrinkle that he'd used at Arkansas. Sperano liked it, running back Ronnie Brown volunteered to run it, and four rushing touchdowns and one passing touchdown later, the Dolphins won 38-13. to I played football for a while, and that's the first and only time I saw a New England Patriots team have no answers on defense, Pennington told King. Wait till this year, bro. For Sperano's impressive work that year, he didn't win the Coach of the Year award. First-year Falcons coach Mike Smith, who led the team from the dregs uh, of the Mike Vick dogfighting scandal and the Bobby Petrino abrupt end-season exit the year before, secured the award for securing a wild-card berth with the same 11-5 record. But maybe in hindsight it should have been Sperano, given that he's the only coach in the last 15 years to disrupt Bill Belichick's dominance of the AFC East. Yeah, man. I mean, he did some good things, and he definitely will be sorely missed. You know, he was the uh, offensive line coach most recently for the Vikings, and, um, you know, he was our coach that year in 2008, and it was a beautiful year. Um, all right, next one comes from Dolphins Wire. Four questions as Dolphins training camp is near. As training camp begins on July 26th, the Dolphins have plenty of questions to answer. From Ryan Tannehill's health to the Dolphins linebacking core, head coach Adam Gase will have a lot on his plate before the team begins their regular season schedule on September 9th. With so summer camp set to be, be in full swing shortly, here are the four questions the team will need to answer before their season opener against the Titans. Brian Tannehill's health. Yes, Tannehill appears to be healed from his uh, season-ending ACL injury nearly 365 days ago, but many thought he was healthy entering training camp last year, which last year he didn't have the surgery, now he does. Major difference. The good news is Tannehill did not have any limitations during spring practices as he didn't even wear a knee brace on the field. The biggest question is can he stay healthy throughout the course of training camp and the regular season? The Dolphins won't get the answer to that question for a little while. In the meanwhile, the Dolphins will hope that Tannehill can regain his 2016 late season form when he threw for 1,723 yards, 13 touchdowns against 5 interceptions as the team finished with a 7-1 record during that span. Dude, he, he's, he was lights out then, he's going to be lights out this year, and he's going to be raised into that top 10 for sure talk this year. People are going to stop hating on him. Next. The third linebacker position. Throughout training camp and the preseason, the Dolphins will likely experiment with their linebacking unit. While Kiko Alonso and Raekwon McMillan are definite starters, the team needs to find out who their third linebacker will be. The Dolphins selected Jerome Baker in the third round of this year's draft, but he might not be ready for the starting role. If that is the case, the Dolphins rely on either Stephon Anthony or Chase Allen to start at outside linebacker. I think it'll, I think it'll be Baker, but... Honestly, I would be all right with uh, Anthony or Allen in there. I think they're both capable, and I think they can both handle the job. Next, who will start at cornerback alongside Xavier Howard? Howard is pegged uh, as one of the Dolphins' starting cornerbacks, but who will be the team starter alongside him? The battle will be between Cordray Tankersley and Tony Lippett. Tankersley started in 11 games last season with mixed results as he recorded 31 tackles and 7 pass breakups. Lippett missed the 2017 season due, a, due to a torn Achilles, but he led the Dolphins in interceptions in 2016 where he registered 4 of them. If Lippitt is 100%, he will have the slight edge in the competition, but Achilles injuries are difficult to recover from. Excuse me, I think he's going to be fine. And I really think that him and Tankersley are both going to get playing time, and I think they're both going to perform. Will the Dolphins bounce back? In Gase's first season with the Dolphins, the team finished with a 10-6 record in 2016 as they made their first playoff appearance in eight years. Then the team followed that up with a 6-10 campaign the next year as Hurricane Irma, player and assistant coaching distractions, injuries, and mediocre quarterback play led to a disappointing season. Odds makers are not high on the Dolphins this season as they have them finishing around the six win mark but the AFC is full of questions question marks outside of the Steelers and Patriots the Dolphins could indeed contend for a wild card uh, spot if Tannehill can remain healthy bruh we're winning the division this year and the Patriots are gonna have to fucking play for a wild card spot so fuck you guys ah I'm just saying just saying <laughs> all right anyway uh for this next one, it is 
Uh, what is this? This is a Bleacher Report article. Undrafted free agents with the best chance of making an NFL roster. And we had a guy land on this list. And it is... Linebacker Kaysen Collins. The Miami Dolphins are far from settled at linebacker with up and down play from Kiko Alonso and two new potential starters in Raekwon McMillan and Jerome Baker. Everyone else's job is up for grabs, which creates the perfect scenario for an undrafted free agent to stake his claim. The team also drafted Quentin Poling in the seventh round before signing Kaysen Collins and Mike McCray. A stiff competition will ensue between those three rookies, but Collins established an early edge during the offseason. Kaysen is actually showing a little bit of ability to absorb some things, defensive coordinator Matt Burke said per the Palm Beach Post Jason Leazer. He's got some savvy about him and stuff. The linebacker played well during his collegiate career yet struggled with injuries and thus never served as a full-time starter. Also his overall speed is a concern after running a 479 second 40-yard dash in North Carolina's pro day. However Collins is nifty working through traffic and playing between the tackles since concerns or tackles. Since concerns exist about Alonzo missing tackles, Collins might be the ideal developmental option as an inside or outside linebacker. A healthy Collins adds quality depth to a team in the middle uh, of an overall makeover. We are definitely not in an overall makeover, but hey, whatever. Uh, Alright, next one. Which actually is, is kind of funny since I just we just talked about the linebackers and this is one of them. Dolphins placed Mike McCray on reserve retired list. The Dolphins made a change at linebacker ahead of Wednesday's start to training camp because one of their linebackers had a change of heart about continuing his career. The team announced that they have placed Mike McCray on the reserve retired list on Tuesday afternoon. McCray signed with the team as an undrafted free agent in May after playing his college ball at the University of Michigan. McCray was a two-year starter in Ann Arbor and left school with 30 and a half tackles for loss. They replaced him on the roster by signing Frank Ginda. Ginda spent a month and a half with the Cardinals after going undrafted out of San Jose State. Ginda set a Mountain West record with 173 tackles last season. Uh, okay. Real quick. Uh, I'm going to read to you what it was that he said. Bear with me for just a second. I have to find it. Do 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 come on where is it where is it where is it ah see this was from yesterday uh and since I'm so behind I'm having to catch up and so I'm having to find it okay here's here's what he said you deserve to be happy you deserve to live a life you are excited about don't let others make you forget that I've been playing sports my whole life from soccer to basketball from baseball to football I didn't start playing football until I was in sixth grade and from there on it grew on me more and more sports has taught me so much and it's what I know well but football has helped shape me into uh, the man I am today through the great times and the bad times. But I'm so much more than just an athlete. I'm a man of God, I'm a man with a sense of humor, I'm a man who wants to give back, I'm a man who likes photography, I'm a man who loves kids, I'm a man who loves to cook, and I'm a man who is loving. For some time now, I've been playing the game of football for the wrong reasons and doing this. T and during this time, I sacrificed my happiness and my well-being. I want to encourage those reading this to do what feels good on the inside and not what looks good on the outside. Also, make sure you are doing it for you and your happiness and not for others and their happiness. With that being said, after talking with my wife-to-be and my family, I have officially ended my playing career. Although this is the end of my football playing career, it is not the end of my football career. I want to thank all my coaches, family, friends, supporters, and fans for all the support and help you gave me. Uh, I look forward to what the future brings to me and my family. You will never be happy until you love yours. So there, there you have it. He uh, he decided it wasn't really for him, and you know it's time to bow out and move on. Uh, all right. So this next article comes from Dolphins Wire, and it's about uh, Dolphins sign linebacker Frank Ginda place Mike McCray on reserve retired list. Um, well, I'm actually not really going to read too much of this, just the first couple, because it mostly just repeats what I just talked about. So, on Tuesday, Dolphins signed linebacker Frank Ginda just two days before training camp. In a subsequent move, undrafted free agent linebacker Mike McCray was placed on reserve retired list. As a junior at San Jose State, Ginda led the nation in tackles uh, per game with 13.3, while also setting a Mountain West single-season record with 173 total tackles. So, not a bad replacement. And, you know, I mean, you got to respect the man's decision. He does, or he's doing what he feels is best for him and his family. So, you know, good luck to him, and I hope it all works out. 
Uh, Alright, and this next article comes from Dolphins Wire. It is, Dolphins inch closer to moving training facility to Miami Gardens. Yeah, you know, they've been talking about needing upgrades. Uh, they, you know, are at Nova Southeastern right now. Um, the Baptist Health Training Facility. They were talking about maybe just upgrading that, possibly going to Miramar, or, you know, just using some land, uh, that's part of the Dolphins stadium um, to to build a, a brand new facility on and it looks like that's where they're leaning um, there was also an article I saw recently about how they're trying to get uh, some additional funding which they seem to have gotten um, so but it looks like that's the front runner and that's probably where it's gonna end up which I think probably makes the most sense honestly logistically and all that so on Tuesday, the Miami-Dade County Commission approved a plan that will help the Miami Dolphins move to a new training facility near Hard Rock Stadium in Miami Gardens. <clears throat> the county uh, commission agreed to amend the current stadium deal with the Dolphins to help fund the five, uh, $50 million training facility. Under the agreement, the county pays the Dolphins up to $5 million in hotel taxes each year depending on the number of events Hard Rock Stadium holds. The amendment now allows the team to collect an additional $750,000 each year. The Dolphins have been practicing in Broward County at Baptist Health Training Facility at Nova Southeastern University in Davie since 1993. Before that, the Dolphins held their training camps and practices at St. Thomas University in Miami. Speaking of training camp, the Dolphins will begin theirs on Thursday, July 26th at 8.30 a.m. Boom. Uh, yeah, so, <clears throat> it's looking like, uh, it's looking, like I said, it's looking like that's probably where they're going to end up be, uh, end up being located, uh, here in the future. I mean, it's going to take some time before they, you know, get that built up and, you know, ready and so on and so forth. So they're going to stay where they're at from now. Uh, but that's pretty cool. I think it's great and you know, we'll have to see um, Anyway, other than that guys, I am done with the with today's show uh, So if you like it, please subscribe. That is the most important thing. Definitely leave some comments share it with your friends um, You know and hit the like button uh, so Fins up and training camp starts tomorrow. We're gonna have a great season. I can't wait for it and I'll talk to you guys soon